Blender Studio collabs with OK Go on their new music video, create a Tamagotchi friend in After Effects, and Premiere Beta just added a new masking feature that just might make rotoscoping obsolete. It's Motion Mondays. Now, if only I could come up with an idea to test this new Premiere masking feature out on. Huh. Last month, you might have missed that Blender Studio announced they were teaming up with Will Anderson and Lucas Zanotto to create a music video for OK Go. Now, if you're familiar with OK Go, you know they do all types of these crazy music videos. So one of the artists, Will Anderson, he does incredible character animation and digital puppet work, while Lucas brings those iconic character designs that I'm sure you've seen before. So what they did was they created a puppet rig that is live real-time interactive follows the live movements and syncs with the music and get this it's all inside of blender and of course blender's open source and to keep with the whole open source theme they're actually giving away the project files they use for the music video for free the music video itself is pretty nuts you'll actually see the blender interface as part of the video which has got to make Blender fans super, super happy. And at the very end, they even show some behind the scenes stuff as part of the music video itself. So it's another awesome Blender collaboration that shows what's possible when you combine great artists with powerful tools. And best part is you get to download the whole setup and play around with it yourself. And you'll find the link to that in the description below. Side Effects Labs just dropped Simple Shapes 2.0, a free playground for Houdini that adds three mesh creation tools that look super useful. So you got a simple shape generator, capsules, and hexagon grids. Now what makes them handy is they have viewport handles and slider controls so it's easy to edit. And these shapes can be used as controllers on rigs or profiles for sweep nodes. The capsule object is perfect for collision detection and rounded forms. The hexagon grid lets you create procedural hex patterns that are perfect for motion graphics and games. And it's one of those updates that seems really simple but actually expands a ton of functionality in Houdini and you get it for free. John Laporte recently posted his thoughts on where he thought motion design was heading over on LinkedIn. And it's all stemming from his highlighting of Ben Frake, a motion designer who actually created this incredible keyboard, like an actual physical product Product that you can buy. So Ben took all of his motion design skills and applied them to product design, working with the company to bring this whole thing to life. Now what John pointed out is how motion design is becoming increasingly relevant in fields like UI design, branding, architecture, moving way beyond its roots in advertising and music videos. And it's this whole motion mindset that you can apply to expand your imagination for problem solving outside of tiny screens. I feel like we as motion designers tend to underestimate all the skills we actually have. We wear so many hats. So it's cool to see not only John commenting on this kind of evolution here, but Ben actually making the dream come true with a real product that you can grab over at Knob Design. You can find the link to that in the description. Now onto some School of Motion news. Our Ride Volume 2 course is officially out, and Joey just dropped a massive tutorial talking about how he created an interactive pixel art character that you can literally punch all in Rive. So he walks through not only how he used AI generated assets, but then how he integrated them with Rive to build this interactive piece, including all the troubleshooting that comes to pushing these tools to their limit. We've also got an awesome workshop scheduled for September 11th with the folks at Real Illusion. They're talking about digital doubles and all exclusively on our all access platform. And speaking of keeping up with what's coming here at School of Motion, we're really excited about our new coming soon page that gives you all the info on upcoming courses, workshops, and our monthly portfolio reviews. It's basically your roadmap for everything that we're working on so you can always plan ahead and never miss the good stuff. So check it out over at our website, schoolmotion.com. Douglas McGinnis, founder of Animated Company, just opened a private beta for something called Tether that could change how we think about working in After Effects. So what Tether does is it lets you create AI animation all inside of After Effects and controlled using null objects. So you don't need node graphs or comfy UI or puppet tools, just nulls. So you grab a null, you move it, and then the AI generated video follows your direction. And it kind of reminds me of the Moon Valley approach where you're actually art directing the video output instead of just you know, crossing your fingers and hoping for the best. Currently, After Effects doesn't really have any integrated AI tools like this. So it's going to be interesting to see 
what this amounts to. And if you want in on the beta, just go to his LinkedIn post. You can find the link to that post in the description below. Now on to some more AI news. There's an interesting NBC article about how humans are being hired to basically be uh, AI janitors and clean up the, the slop. And it's perfectly capturing kind of what we've been seeing. The AI hype has been massive, but the reality is you're never actually using the raw output for actual client work. The article shows before and after examples where the AI text looks like garbage and needs some artistic skills to actually fix it. So one big takeaway from this article was a recent MIT report that said that while AI has displaced outsourced workers more than permanent employees, 95% of businesses' generative AI pilots are getting zero returns on investment. So all of this hype and the juice just doesn't seem to be worth the squeeze. So this should hopefully make everyone feel a little bit better about AI not completely replacing us, at least not just yet. Motion design skills are always gonna be essential because AI can only get you so far and it's gonna take an artist to take it all the way to the finish line. All right, let's switch gears to some amazing human artistry and show some amazing work from around the interwebs that will make you forget about AI even existing for, for a few seconds. So first up is Yeti Studios with their new opener for Village Cinemas and every single frame is basically a painting. The detail, the handcrafted love in every shot, it's incredible. Yeti, yet again, knocking it out of the park. Next up is Kaho Yoshida's brand new 2025 reel that opens with some incredible stop motion work. In her reel, she's mixing cell animation with all types of mixed media. And I find this stuff just so refreshing, especially in the age of AI. You can just tell how handcrafted and thoughtful everything is. And I think the pendulum's gonna kind of swing from AI and go back to this more handcrafted feel. And clients are gonna want more of this type of work. So Kaho even shared the behind the scenes of her peach themed reel opener, showing her actual stop motion setup with all these little resin drops. Sure, she's doing things the hard way, but hey, us artists love the process, right? And finally, there's this piece for Rolling Bar Bowling Alley by Ultra Combo Studio out of Taiwan with these amazing retro space vibes that immediately reminded me of that old Sesame Street pinball animation. Has this video sounded any older? So you got the grain, the gradients, the way it integrates with the actual bowling alley space. And dare I say they bowled a strike on this one. Adobe just dropped some impressive masking tools in their Premiere beta and Howard Pinsky gave us a sneak peek that's pretty nuts. It's basically rotoscoping with a single click. You select your subject, your object, and it tracks forwards or backwards with amazing results. There is a new object mask tool alongside redesigned shape masks. But the object mask is the real star here. So naturally I tested with a pug. So the workflow is pretty simple. You just hold down the mask button, you go to the object mask tool, select what you want. I could either choose the ribbon or the pug or both, and it'll track through each frame doing a surprisingly good job. And Roto is just one of those tedious tasks that does anyone really like to do manually? So having AI handle that heavy lifting while you focus more on the creative stuff makes a lot of sense here. Now, I just hope that AI does UV unwrapping and weight painting for us next because those tasks are about as fun as a root canal. Now from saving time to completely wasting it, there's this wonderfully ridiculous new plugin from Motion by Nick called Shapeshifters. And it's basically a Tamagotchi for designers that can live directly inside of After Effects, Illustrator, or Premiere. And you get this little dockable window where you have to feed and interact with your virtual pet. You have to be careful because if you neglect them, they actually die. There are over 3 million possible combinations. You can even customize your shifter with a new outfit layer every day and it all happens in real time, which is pretty cool, but it's also kind of completely absurd, but I love it. Considering I can't even keep my plants alive, I don't think I'm ready for this kind of responsibility, but you can go and grab it over on AE Scripts and AE Plugins. Now onto our School of Motion student of the week, Lars Carton from Belgium, who's a digital designer and front end developer who is actually a design teacher himself. So Lars joined Design Kickstart to tackle something I feel like a lot of us struggle with, serious imposter syndrome. And he said that this gets addressed directly in the course and finds it validating to hear that he's not alone and feeling this way, which is very important. We all, 
We all feel imposter syndrome, right? Now his approach to learning more is actually refreshing. Instead of randomly moving stuff around until it kind of looks okay, he wanted to understand the fundamentals and get consistent results, which is where our all access curriculum came in. His work for Design Kickstart here shows great use of negative space and his website is super cool. He's got this interactive robot that responds to your cursor. It's a perfect example of how motion design is moving into web experiences. And the fact that he's teaching these skills while continuing to learn them himself shows the kind of growth mindset you need to be a great designer. So remember last week we talked about Nano Banana and all the craziness that Google Gemini thing? Well, someone took a tool called Nano Look that integrates Nano Banana directly inside Unreal Engine's editor. You can take a rough render with basic shapes and use prompts to fill in details while maintaining visual consistency, proportions, and even camera angles. So what I feel it's doing is essentially treating Nano Banana as a real-time renderer that adds detail on top of your viewport. Now the tool's more designed for level art suggestions and rapid arch viz concepts creation, letting you iterate quickly without ever leaving Unreal Engine. So early access is available to the developer's newsletter subscribers. So if this sounds useful for your workflow, be sure to find the link in the description and sign on up. And finally, our very own Aaron Rubinowitz shared something cool with us. Akram Khazravi Fard released a demo of Frozen Waterfall 2.0 for Unreal Engine 5. So this updated tool uses geometry scripting and generates realistic ice sheets and icicles on any mesh with features like cascading surface drips, procedural snow buildup, and even smart pathfinding for uneven surfaces. The new version includes reworked materials with shimmering fantasy ice effects, faster performance, and a smoother workflow. And as they say, winter's coming, so grab this tool over on Fab so you're well prepared. And that is it for this week's Motion Mondays. You'll find links to all the things I talked about in the description below. And be sure to join our All Access exclusive workshop on September 11th. Until then, I'll see you next time. I gotta go snuggle some pugs. They're adorable.